Hi, Matt here from Automation Fixation. Today I want to take you through the basics of Microsoft Power Apps. Power Apps is a tool from Microsoft that allows you to build custom apps with connectivity and functionality from Office 365 services and the Microsoft platform. The main benefit of Power Apps is that it is so simple to create your own application. You don't have to know how to code and the process to design, build and publish is very quick and simple. This video is the first in a series of tutorials to cover the basics of Power Apps. Please also check out my other videos for specific apps and use cases which I've come across while building various solutions. Let's go through how Power Apps can be used. The intent of Power Apps is to be used for business mobile applications. Due to licensing and technical difficulties with sharing, the main use is for internal applications. Apps are able to be viewed through a browser or a mobile device. As it is part of the Office 365 platform, it is very simple to integrate with a huge range of services such as SharePoint, OneDrive, SQL Server, Active Directory, and Excel Online. But there are also many third-party connections available such as the Google Suite with Gmail, Google Drive, Google Sheets, and Google Tasks, and also Dropbox and there are many other premium connectors available. So what are some of the use cases for Power Apps? Well, with COVID and return to the workplace, you could build a desk booking application, visit a registration, attendance registration, or communication apps. Or there are more traditional applications such as leave, holiday management, employee directories, expense approval, and employee onboarding. Okay, so enough talking about Power Apps. Now let's see how to actually use it. There are a couple of approaches to accessing Power Apps. For those that don't have Office 365 licenses, you'll need to head to the Power Apps website. That's powerapps.microsoft.com and click Start Free to start a trial. However, if you or your company already have an Office 365 license, then you can go through office.com. To get to Power Apps, Click in the bottom left hand corner, All Apps, and then click on Power Apps. So there are a couple of options to quickly create your first app. You have the ability to start from data using any number of sources that exist within the Office 365 environment. The most common and simple ones are SharePoint and Excel. However, there are many other sources available as required. The second most common option is to start your app from blank and build out the screens and sources yourself. For the first example, I'm going to select a SharePoint list as the data source. It's very simple to create a SharePoint site and then create a list. For the purpose of this example, I've created a list called expense list and pre-populated some entries to use for the sample app. So back in Power Apps, I'm going to select the SharePoint option to start from data. First, I'll need to select the SharePoint site that I'm using for this example. Simply put in the address of the SharePoint site, click Go, and then select the correct list. Then click Connect. So we are now in the studio section of Power Apps and our very first app has been generated. To test out the app as it is, we can click on the play icon in the top right hand corner. You can also use the F5 shortcut key to toggle between preview and edit. Power Apps has automatically added a number of default icons and functionality for our list, including a search bar to search through your list, a refresh button to refresh the SharePoint list, a sort button to sort list in alphabetical order, and a create new item button to go through and create a new item in the list. You can also click on the arrow to go through to the details behind the item. So now that we're back in the edit screen, 
An alternative to going into preview mode is to hold the Alt key on the keyboard to navigate through the application while in edit mode. As you hold the Alt key, you will see your cursor change and you're able to click on the icons. Okay, so the next key part to navigating through Power Apps is the tree view on the left hand side. This is a view of all the screens and underlying controls within each screen. Controls are what Power Apps refers to as things within your screen. Some examples are your labels, texts, icons, and inputs. You'll also see the components tab, and I'll explain this in a separate video. However, this is used for reusable controls. Some examples include menus, headers, and footers, and you only need to create it once and then use multiple times. In this generated app, the screens are set up in three different views. When using lists such as SharePoint, you'll generally have three different screens to view and manage the list data. So you have your browse screen to view the total records. This is generally the home screen to browse and drill down into each item. Then you have the detailed screen. This is to view the details of an individual item when navigating from the browse screen. And the edit screen. This is to edit an existing item via the detail screen or to create a new item via the browse screen. A few useful things to note about the tree view is when you select the control on the left, it will highlight the item on the right hand side. You can also do it the other way around and select an item on the right and view on the left. You can also double click on a control to rename and you can also adjust the layering to reorder and bring to front or send to the back. The next area of interest is on the right hand side. This is the overall view of the properties of a control. For example, if you're selecting a text control, you can also edit the text here or you can edit it in the properties. You can also update formatting, sizing, or colors. Another example is to modify the view of a list. Power Apps refers to these lists as galleries. You can manually move around the content within the list, or you can select the gallery, and you can change things like the layout. So say for example, I want to just show the title. You can click on title, and I'll update in the gallery. Chances are that you want to further customize the app, including additional screens, additional navigation, and this is very simple to do. In this example, I'd like to add a help screen. So first of all, let's create a new screen to navigate towards. At the top of the screen, we have the insert ribbon, and you will be able to select new screen. Let's select a blank screen. Once it's created, you can go to the new screen from the tree view. I'd suggest at this point you rename the screen to something that makes sense. In this case, I will rename it to help screen. Now let's create an icon that will be able to navigate towards the new screen. Go back to your browse screen and click on the insert ribbon. And let's select an icon. You'll likely want to adjust the icon, color, and size to match the other icons. You can do this through the properties section on the right hand side. Now you can't click on the icon as it is. So we need to make the icon navigate to the help screen. To do this, we need to assign an action. Select the icon, and at the top, click on the action ribbon, and click navigate. We can then select the screen that we wish to navigate, and you can select the transition. Once the navigate action has been assigned, you can now hold down Alt, and click on the icon to navigate to our help screen. In the help screen, we need a way to get back to the main screen. 
So to do this, you can add a button or you can add an icon. Again, go up to the insert ribbon, click on icon. In this case, I'm going to click the home icon. Again, click on the action ribbon, click navigate and select the relevant screen. So the help screen is blank. So let's start filling it with some text. To add text, you can either click on the insert ribbon as previously shown, or you can click here in the insert navigational bar. Let's click text label and we can move it to where we need it and type in some text. Now that our screen has some details and our home button is working. Okay, so when working with controls, some other useful functions to note include the reorder button. This allows you to bring things to the front or the back. The align button, which allows you to align it in the screen if you want it left, center or right. And also if you are wanting to apply logic to a number of controls, you can group them in a single group to make it a lot easier. So now that our screen has some details and our home button is working, let's click back through to our home screen. So we've touched upon this throughout the tutorial. However, the formula bar is located at the top of the screen. This allows you to edit certain properties after clicking on a control. An example is by clicking on something like this text and updating the details directly in the formula bar. So if we want to make it look a bit neater, we can add in a space here. You can also select the various properties by using the drop down menu on the left of the formula bar. If you're familiar with Excel, the formula bar and formulas themselves are very similar. You can click through the formula symbol to see formulas that are available for use, or for more information on each formula, you can click through to learn more to be directed to an external guidance page. So you now should have a fairly good view of the basics of the studio when editing an application. There are a few additional areas of the studio that will be of use. So on the left hand side, we can click here to expand and we've already gone through the tree view. We've gone through insert. So now let's have a look at the data tab. So in this screen, you can see all the data sources that are feeding into your application. So an example, if you've got a SharePoint list here, you can also refresh this manually here. If you have any media in your application, you'll be able to see a summary of the media here. So before we lose anything, let's go back to save and save this version. You can save it to the cloud or you can save it to your computer. And let's name the app. Once you're ready, click save. Once you've saved the app, you have the option to share it with other people. So click on share and you can select their name and you can share it to them. The users must have access to the SharePoint list in order to view the data. All right, and then in this screen, you'll see the link that directs you straight to the app. And here we have our app, a fully functional SharePoint integrated app. And that's everything. If you found this video useful, make sure you subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave a comment if you're interested in seeing something specific covered in a future video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.